I believe we are live. One thing says we're live, one thing says we're redirecting. So oh, let's ramble for a bit. <laughs> Let me see. Can I ramble? That will be such a challenge for me. So <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was 100%, 100% operator error and not actually technical difficulties, as it turns out. Um, oh, sorry, just a minute here. I'm, look at me multitasking. I'm doing about three things at once right now. You just don't know it. So, yeah. Yeah. my that computer 100%. 100%. is still, I'm trying not to talk now so it doesn't echo. Okay, Facebook is frozen, but Zoom is not. So what's that mean? One has no idea. This one has no idea. Um, let's see. Okay, it's finally caught up. There we go. Uh, did I mention before that I switched over from Windows 10 to Windows 11? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> it has slowed everything down. It took me that long to mute my computer because it just, it takes so long for it, it clicks and you have to wait for the thing to open and then you have to wait for, it. it's just ridiculous. Okay, so let me, let me take one step back because I always forget. Hi everyone. This is Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher, um, coming to you live from beautiful downtown Mournville on uh, Thursday evening. Uh, yes, as I mentioned earlier, the technical difficulties that, that delayed the start time were 100% operator error. Uh, I had done a training course earlier today, and so I'm using my C ready as well. And I, I just needed to use my iPad for the microphone, not for the camera, because I wasn't sure if it was going to be a lot of people, a few people, if we were going to be on or not. So when I logged into my camera this morning, I turned off the video and just left it on audio because I didn't need the video and I didn't want it to, you know, go on without warning kind of thing because these, these are complete strangers I was talking to. And uh, yeah, so every time I tried to log back on just before I was supposed to go live, I couldn't get the picture to show up. I don't know why, I just couldn't get the picture to show up. Yes, that's because I turned the video off. So, <laughs> so there, and, and you know what? It's, I was having one of those moments where I just kind of sat back and went, okay, what else can I try? And I just happened to notice the screen and the checkbox and thought, oh, bloody heck, that was me that did that this morning. So, totally on me, thanks for your patience. Thanks for coming back. Uh, when I do my weekly agendas, or I have so many things, so many stories in the logs and to tell you this evening. Um, when I do my weekly schedules, I, I just, I, first I just put, I was, you know, I'll be alive, it'll be a post, it'll be a whatever. And then I thought, no, I, you know, some of the times at least, I know what the project is. I should write down what I'm doing. So when I made it for this week, though, I just, because I have so much going on right now, many projects started and done and hockey things and other things. And I, I wasn't hundred percent sure what I was going to do. So I thought I'll just put something down. And so I noticed for Friday I, or for Thursday, I barely wrote anything down. I just put Facebook live. So the official title is a bit of this, a bit of that is what we're basically ending up with. So let's start. Here's my other challenge. I want in the comments, I need your assistance. Because I always have, and yes, for, for those who've heard my friend's story of spilling a cup of coffee on a computer, I don't know. I always have, as you can see here, a cup of tea on my desk in various states of drinking. Usually it's not very full because I like my tea as hot as possible. So when I get it, I tend to drink it as fast as possible. But every time I do a live, I want to have a drink just in case, you know, like frog in my throat or whatever. So I always make a cup of tea right before 
I drink maybe one sip and then I don't drink the rest of it. And I bring it there for a reason. So um, yeah, so your job <laughs> is to remind me, and I'm just gonna duck down because I dropped something. Um, your job is to remind me to, to stop every now and again and take a sip, which is basically also take a breath. <laughs> Ah, you guys know me. You know that that's uh, that doesn't happen very often. Okay, let us get started with all the things we have going. This is the January paper pumpkin kit card that I showed you. What was I say last week? Yes. Now it's beyond the it's beyond the deadline for the order them, but some of you might already have them. So, so I thought, hey, as these things come up, I'll tell you. I am not super, super quick. I, I did a few things with this kit, but I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> because I tend to do what's due tomorrow, not what's due a week from now. So this is the card. How do I think of it? There we go. And this is how it's meant to open, right? And it is fun. You can't help it. Even more fun with sound effects. But as I was uh, doing my online stuff and checking in and doing all my updates, checking for messages today, I saw another fold. <laughs> For this card. See how I do this? I'm building up the suspense. Uh, I found another fold for this card. And as soon as I saw it, I just thought, oh my, I really, really like that. I like that perhaps a little better than the original fold. Oops, am I not the sequence off? Um, and I'm going to, just a minute here, I have to very quickly open up this. Uh, Heather Dawn Reese is the lady, name of the lady who posted a picture of this. Now her card is not exactly the same. She, she used different flowers, but check this bad boy out. Now, I love the fact that it's the, the two different styles. Um, my flowers are these, which just happen to be the same color, which I had on my desk a minute ago. Um, and the reason I use these ones is because I have pre-cut a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and that's a lot of times, that's how I choose what's gonna go. What's within reach of me? Oh, that, that's what I'm using. But here's the beauty of it. Look at how this opens. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and it stands. <laughs> so, and, and, and here's the beauty of this too, is you barely have to do anything to make it do this. So I'm gonna show you, isn't this gorgeous? I'm gonna leave this here so it's kind of in the screen still because it's just such a pretty card. Okay, so <laughs> here is the original layout, right? And so you're supposed to fold them like this. Oops, that might be helpful to put it. You're supposed to fold them like this, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold them both in instead, for starters, okay? And then you need to take each one of these and fold them in half. Now I have all the fancy tools. I have a scoring table and I have my little uh, trimmer, which also has a scoring blade. And yes, that's one way to do it. But I'm gonna show you another really easy way to do this. And it doesn't work for everything, but on something as easy as this, it does. So fold the heart in, again, let's maybe try to be on screen where you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna fold the heart over, right? Cause we, we're gonna want the heart to bend this way eventually. So here's what we're gonna do. And I have this ruler, I love this ruler. I have two rulers I love. I, 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 have, I think I have been obsessed with stationery since I was a kid. I should ask my mom, but I'm sure she would tell me yes. So I have this one that I love because it has centimeters and inches and it, whichever way you flip it. If you flip it this way, centimeters are on the top. So you're leading edge. If you flip it this way, inches are on the top, but at any point you can see both. Love it, love it. So this is my other one that I love. And this is a tiny little metal ruler with a bit of cork on it so it doesn't slide. So you could use this ruler, very flimsy. I wouldn't necessarily use this one. You don't have to necessarily be as fancy as this one, but use a little bit stiffer ruler. And all you have to do is go down, find the point of the cleavage. One of these times I'm going to figure out what that part of the heart is called. The cleavage and find the point at the bottom and take your, put a, put a little bit of pressure on your ruler so it doesn't slip and take your card and run your fingers right along the very bottom. You can see my finger moving now. That's pretty cool, right? So if you do that first, that gives you the start of your crease. And then you can fold it over because now you got the good start going and do that. And I still swear by bone folders because I've had too many, too many uh-ohs with the ink on my hand or something. So we do that. Now I've already pre-done that on this other one. So 
you'll notice that my hearts don't quite line up. Uh, let me see here. Let me borrow this paper over here. They don't quite line up in the corner. They're a bit better at the top. So all I have to do is do a little manhandling. And then what, what we're doing is because when I did the original fold, I just folded on the like the lines that were here. And they're, the score lines are wide, so they, they get, there's a little bit of play in them. So I'm going to push it where I want, and I'm holding it where I want. And then I'm just going to go to these other ones and give them a nice, nice good burnish, because it will hold them a little closer. Now, it does not matter if you are uh, exactly even, because you're putting all this cool stuff on the front that's going to totally distract them. But you see how now there's not Now that I pulled that piece of red out, no, you can't see. But see, now, with the fold, now it's lined up. So there we go. Boop. Boop. Isn't that cool? And then the kit has, you know, all these wonderful things you decorate it with, just like that. Ta-da! Who says less is more? And you're done. And then you have something like this. Now you could just keep using this stuff from the kit. Like I said, I had a whole, I have so many things pre-cut because if I need three flowers for a card, I will take an entire sheet of, sheet of card stuff, cut it in half, and cut out as many as I can out of that sheet so I have extra so next time I don't have to cut them because they'll already be waiting. I don't know why. I, I have it as, hi, my name is Tracy and I have a die cutting problem. Um, but they, yeah, this so you can put whatever you want on this. I think this card is just awesome and it just so happened that it said all my stuff matched. Thank you, Heather Don Reese. Now, I did have one other little uh, tip for you. Yeah, or not so much a tip, I guess, just as a comment, but when I did the our little thing last week, I said, oh, I could put little X's and O's on these, and then you could put like two of them on a thing and it would have like a hug and a kiss on it. In my opinion, <laughs> the stamps in the set are a touch too big. Like the X, I had to put a little bit kitty wampus, another word I love, kitty wampus, um, because it didn't, it, I couldn't put it straight up and down and still have it fit in the card. The, the, the hug fit a little better. So eh, I'm not sure I would recommend you use the stamp set to do that. But I will tell you that in the Halloween, Halloween, in the Valentine set that is in the current little mini catalog, I didn't glue these down yet. That's another story. Would you like, how many stories would you like in one night? That's the question. In the Valentine set that is in the mini catalog, it is called A Sweet Conversation, and it is adorable. Love conversation hearts. I love the old ones that used to fizz. Mm, those are the best. So this is the set. And in here, it's one of my little things that's taking a, taking a walk. It comes with this great set of dies that makes all these little things. Um, so in here, you could oops, cut out some X's and O's. Sorry, you could cut out some hearts if you wanted to, to put on the tags instead. Or, and I thought I had the second one underneath here. Um, you could, or let's do that again. You could cut out the hearts. You could use these X and O's. That's what I was going for. I distracted myself. You can use these X's and O's in this stamp set, which are a little bit smaller than the ones that came in the paper pumpkin kit. They're also a little bit more rounded off. But you could use those ones. You could cut a multitude of hearts, <laughs> as you can tell. I told you I have a die cutting problem. So when I was making the other cards, sometimes I cut a whole bunch of them just because I don't know what I'm going to put on a card. And so I have a whole bunch and I on, off, on, off, on, and then finally decide and then I just, then I have extras like this. I didn't use the envelope, now I have an envelope cut for next time. But you could add some of these hearts to put on it, or you could use this set of <laughs> I do like letters. So this is one of the other sets of dies. That's what I ended up using was the X and the O up here. And this is the playful alphabet dies. And that's what size these ones are if you wanted to make it a little more um, contrasting. The, this stamp set is designed to look kind of more watercolory, so it's not as dark. So I found the X and the O. And then I had an issue with trying to figure out which way the O went, because the O is very squished. And I'm going to do which way it went. So I guess if you get a hug from me, you get a squishy hug anyway. So there you go. So I'll tell you why these aren't going down. <laughs> so people ask me sometimes, how did I get into Stampin' Up? <laughs> I will tell you, I got into Stampin' Up, not specifically this particular bottle or brand or anything, but because of this, white glue. <laughs> now, 
what made me think of this today was I was trying to do this very quickly and I was getting very frustrated with this glue because I have this fancy holder that my dear friend Tamara gave me and it works, it's actually a nail polish holder and it works perfect for this glue. And so my glue is always upside down. So I don't have to like constantly shake it and squeeze it and try to get it out. Now it is possible that this is empty, although it feels way too heavy to be empty. So I went to use it and I cannot get the glue to come out of this thing for love nor money, which made me think about how much I hate white glue. And I don't use it very often. You'll notice that I don't use it very often. Oops. And there would be my ceiling. And I've just knocked the camera off the stand. So how's that for fun and excitement? I apologize to anybody who I just made totally motion sick by doing that. Um, I went to reach for something. I should know better. So uh, look at me, we're just, we're carrying on because hey, so this is, this is the stamp and seal. It used to be called um, stamp and snail. And when I was still working as a, as a ranger, um, I went to the teacher's convention one year and the ladies next to me happened to be running a paper or a Stampin' Up booth. I was there for the our junior forest ranger program, which putting in a plug to the hardworking people at junior forest ranger program. Uh, the applications are now open for members. It is a great summer job. True professionals run in that program. Your kids will have an awesome time. 16 to 18 years old, Alberta junior forest rangers. Look it up. It's albertajfr.ca is the website, but um, look it up. There's applications. There's all the information you could want. Great way to spend your summer. I digress. So I was at the teacher's convention and giving out information to this. Now, the teacher's convention had a whole lot more elementary school teachers than high school teachers at the time. So I was not nearly as busy as the booth beside me. All of these teachers kept stopping by to make a card and check out the stuff. And so the whole day I spent going, mm, you know, like looking over the neighbor's head. Mm. And at one point, uh, when it slowed down a little bit and one lady went for lunch, and so it was nice and quiet and then the other lady's all by herself. And I thought, oh, let's go talk. So I went over and I, I struck up a conversation, uh, dear Tim. And one of the things that had fascinated me watching all these other people was they had this seal. It was called snail at the time. And it was, it's basically two-sided tape. Um, but it was the neatest thing. I, I was watching these people, how quickly they were doing it, and more importantly, how clean they were doing it. Because if you, I should have mentioned at the beginning, this would have been, it'll be 10 years ago in April. And so my son was three years old and we had just finished making Christmas wreaths for the whole family. And I remember the living room being white glue from one end to the other and the, the, the wreaths, he was gluing little things onto them and there was glue everywhere and thinking how much I hate white glue. So, I mean, it has its place and it is very handy for certain things, but it's just not my friend. So it turns out it was I was it was the seal that got me. I was so mesmerized by how neat and how easy this was. Ta-da! No mess done. Look at that. Um, that I had to go and ask her what it was. So I struck up a conversation about it. said this the snail or the seal now, and had a lovely conversation and ended up doing a door prize and winning a free party and loving snapping up from the minute I saw it and the rest is history. But anyways, it has to do with white glue. And this white glue gave me nothing but grief today. And that's what made me think of it. So we're back to here. We have the X and O, which I think is cute. Now, why do we have an X and O? That leads me to point number two of tonight's discussion. Um, a tree holder. So look at this little cutie. It is adorable. Um, another fun fact about Tracy, I could eat this entire thing of cinnamon hearts at once because that's how much I love cinnamon hearts. And I, I know a lot of people who think they're just the worst things in the world, but I really love them. Um, so how did I come up with this project for this evening? Well, since you asked, um, as I'm sitting here, you know, staring into space, trying to decide what to do, I, I kept looking at things and I needed to figure out a way to decorate my son's Valentine treat because I thought, and I'm just gonna put this on because they weren't glued on before so I couldn't tie them on to, to give you the full effect of the little hearts with the X and O. This one is not his, as you will gather by all the pink on it. This is not the one for my son. Um, 
I was trying to come up with a way to, there we go, hang on. I'll, do better. I'll do a better bow on the next one. But there you go, that's a hug and a kiss and sit in easy breath to boot. Um, <clears throat> so I bought this, <laughs> yeah, that's just gonna be in the way. Now, I bought this monster Hershey's kit, which comes in a box like this. And when I saw it, I thought, perfect. I could buy this, I'll take it out of the not so attractive box and I will put it in my little cutesy box. Now, when you see this box, if you see it from above, you see how it lines up? It does seem pretty close. Like it's not a whole lot different, right? When you see it this way, <laughs> yes, there's a great difference. So I, I, I know I thought that this was gonna be great, but it turns out it's not. Funny enough though, this, this thing is like, way bigger than the box. So the fact that this box is not much, I don't know how it fits another one. But anyways, yes. So it turns out that this huge kiss is way too big to go in here. So I thought, well, I need to make a kind of a box or a container or something for it. And I thought, can I get something that's the shape of a kiss? Which then made me remember how easy it is and quick and customizable it is to make tag boxes. Now, I don't know if they have an actual name, but these are basically tags that I left long, I overlapped at the bottom, and then I put this little strap around it, um, just because one, it's cute and it gives you somewhere else to decorate, but also because it keeps it from sliding out, right? You could do four of them. So instead of just doing two, you could do four and have them come on either side. But I don't know, I just think it's cute. You can get a bit of the treat, like you see a bit of what, what the treat is, but they're so easy to do. So here's what we're gonna do. Tag topper. Now. I own a couple of these, and I think there might be three of them that are current. I think you can currently get three different ones. And they basically just have different tops on them, and then slightly different like little openings for the tags. And then, as you can see, for the back. So the widest this can go, though, is two inches. Now, if you cut a one-inch strip, when you flip it over, <clears throat> I should have cut a one-inch strip. That would have been a really good example, but I didn't. <laughs> Just see, do I have a strip of paper that I can cut to make it one inch? One inch is got some stellar English there. Okay, so the limit to this is, let's go with one inch. Yeah, the limit to this is two inches. But that doesn't mean you can't make a box a bit bigger than two inches. Um, it just means it'll look more like, like a strawberry basket where you have like the, the corners are missing, you just have the sides. You just make it look like that. Now, could you make a six inch box this way? No, but <clears throat> at least not a solid one, but you could do three strips on each side and make a six by six box. So here's the beauty of the tag topper punch though. Um, get the right angle going. I need, I need to make sure I'm lined up straight because it bugs me when I'm not, but I need to be able to, for you to see what I'm doing. So you can see here's the cut, right? So if you're, if you're not two inches wide, you wanna make sure your whatever width of paper you're putting in there is centered. Now, if you go if you go less than, look at this cool top, right? Because it's only going to go. If I went an inch and a half, I would get. Do this this way. Do that lined up. Yep. So if I went an inch and a half, I would probably get the second bubble. So then I would have two, right? By going the full two inches, I get all three of them. So the other thing worth noting is, let's go over here. That this is how much you're going to lose off the top of your tag when you go to do it. So if you need a strip that is six inches long and you wanna, you wanna tag top the end, you need to make sure you add on an extra half inch because at its widest point, I'm trying to get the right contrast there, at its widest point, you've got an extra half an inch you're gonna lose. So if you need this point, like the bottom of where the, the scallops or the fancy part of whatever tag you're using starts, you need to add on at least an extra half inch to the piece you're doing because you will lose it in the punch. And, and I mean, for the most part, it doesn't matter, but just so you're, if you're ever doing something that is that tightly done, there you go. So in the case of this, my monster kiss is about two inches. It's gonna end up being slightly bigger, but because there's a little bit of give in here, it's, it doesn't matter. So I just stuck with the two inches. So it'll pretty much look like the other one. So here's what I did. I just cut a couple two inch strips. I scored them two inches at the bottom. So whatever width this is gonna be, you're gonna to wanna to make this score line here at the same width so that when you fold it and you put two of them together, 
So I've scored the bottom of both of these at two inches and I go to put them together. My box is now two inches by two inches, right? Um, if, if you wanted to, by design, make this, I guess, uh, what would this be? Yeah, let's go with three and a half inches. Okay, so now I'm curious if I was even close to guessing. Do, do, do. Oh, three and a quarter, just over three and a quarter. That's close. So if you wanted to go this way, then by all means, you can make them that way. But I, I, I'm, the, I'm aiming for a two by two. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, there is a bit of trial and error. The, this other, the first one I made, um, I know how tall it was, but that jar is oh, almost an inch taller than this kiss. So here's the thing, before I glue it together, I'm going to decide how much I need. So doing like this, uh, which because it's not glued together, I'm not sure if I can show you. This is basically what I do. This is how I measure. I go like this. Okay, so if this is here, I need it to go here. So I want to go about here, right? I, I don't want it like super, super tight, but I want to go about here. And it's it should give me the like kind of kiss shape, right? So I'm going to go like this. I'm, and I'm using my, my thumb as, as my guide. Oh, hello, Mary. Okay, so I can tell right now. Oh, look at that. I actually picked a number. So I can tell right now that this is two and a quarter. So that's about how high up I want to be able to tie this thing. So I'm going to go two and three quarters because I'm adding that extra half inch just to be on the safe side. So now, and I, I, I think I do these things weird sometimes, but it works for me. So because I already have a score line here, and because I'm not, I can't remember what this actual piece of paper started out being in length, um, I want two and three quarters. So I'm putting the score line at two and three quarters, and I'm just trimming off the other piece of it. It's two and three quarters. It makes sense to me. Basically, what you need is two and three quarters, or sorry, two and then two and three quarters. So yeah, four and three quarters is what I'm going for. But because I've already got that score line there, and because I love my little mini guillotine, that's how I'm doing it. Because I don't have it only goes to four and a quarter inches, so I, I make it work for me. <laughs> well, look at me all on my own. I'm going to remember to oops, take a sip of tea. Okay, so before we glue these. And in this case, if you made the mistake and you, and you stuck them together, it wouldn't really matter because they're basically just a flat line. Oh, here, I'll show you one more thing. So I told you this punch was two inches wide and it is two inches wide. Let's see, well, let's see if we can make this focus. I know, Mary, aren't they the, aren't they the best? Um, and when they came, I mean, they were a sign up issue, um, deal to begin with. And then for a very short time, they were in stock, but holy, did they go fast. And this is one of my absolute favorite tools. It gets used more than anything. Okay, so regardless of which trimmer you're using, see if I can get it to focus, it's not quite focused. So this is the line for two inches. Now, when you're cutting paper, you should just be consistent. Whichever way you choose to do it, you should be consist consistent. So if you're the kind of person who cuts paper where you go and you just cover the line, then make sure every time you cut, you just cover the line. If you're the one who's, who's like, just touching it or just a little shot, like just as long as you're consistent, right? That's generally the rule. In the case of these trimmers, or sorry, these peg topper punches, you want to be the person who goes just inside the line. <laughs> so this is, you'll notice my strip of paper, because it's hitting the side here, is naturally, it is just shy of that two inch line. Now, what you'll notice when I go to put it in, is it just fits in here, right? It just fits, and then and because I didn't cut exactly straight, shocker, um, it's a little snug. It'll still go. It'll work. But if you're the if you go a little bit over the two inch line, you'll never get your piece of paper in this way. So it has to be just shy of two inches. Uh, the good part is mine's nice and snug, so it's not going to move around on me. So make sure that you, so we've got it in right. We pushed it all the way in, and we've got it centered and then punching and we're sending little bits of paper everywhere so i'm going to do that with both of them i'm going to yeah see this see this one when i cut it has a lot more give to it um same thing i was trying for the just shy of the line but again you know human error that's what makes it homemade is the fact that it's all just a little bit different this seems super short now compared to the other one but okay as I mentioned earlier, I hate white glue, but one thing I do love, tear and tape. 
Now for something like this, especially, I, I think for 3D items, you definitely want something like tear and tape or the seal plus, which is just a little bit stronger adhesive because there'll be a little bit of weight. This, I should have looked at that box before I threw it back in the recycle. This kiss is actually pretty hefty. <laughs> like, I don't know what it weighs exactly, but it is pretty hefty. So you wanna, you wanna give your paper a fighting chance to stay together. I would rather use a little extra adhesive and use the good stuff um, than have it fall apart on somebody when you give it to them. So I'm going to take off my little coverings. This uh, take your pick tool, which I, I'm really trying hard not to call the pick your nose tool. This take your pick tool is so super handy. Um, and I'm getting really used to it now and not using my, my old one. Um, and I use this other tip on it now, the part that has the little putty in it to like pick up small items so much. Okay, so now we put our little adhesive down and we're going to, we're gonna put this piece of paper just before the score line. So it doesn't impede the fold, right? And then we're just gonna press them down. So now we have a cute little dude. Now on this one, I should have done these the other way around. On this one, I just used a piece of um, cardstock and I just wrapped it around here. This is because this is a two by two by two by two. I took an eight and a half piece of cardstock and I just scored it on the two inch marks. And then that left me with, you know, where am I seeing this? It left me with a little half inch flap. Where did I get the big kiss from? Um, <laughs> I was gonna make some joke about that, but I go, where did the kiss come from? Uh, in this case, I got these kisses and I think they're about 25, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I got them at the Dollarama in St. Albert. I have seen them other places, but um, I bought this one about a, well, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago at Dollarama, and they still have them. So there's a chance they, they might still. Um, so yeah, there's a half an inch of cardstock that is kind of buried behind here. I, I like to put the seam at the back. So that's all I did with this is just, I scored it at the two inch marks. I put adhesive on these two sides, the two that touch, just so it's not constantly sliding everywhere. And then I just wrapped it around. For the one we just did, I'm gonna guess that well, I'm going to guess that my measurement was a slightly off because this is a snug fit, but that's okay. Um, that because I'm doing it like this, see, as soon as I tie this, it's not going anywhere. So I don't necessarily need the little piece, but I like the little piece. And because this is less square and more triangular, that piece is not going to work quite as well. Hmm. Let's move it as we go. Um, here, I'm going to tie this together. I'm going to cut a thinner strip. So this ribbon is I'm using this for the first time tonight. Um, there is the pink one that I used on here, which is petal pink. And this one is Misty Moonlight, which is such a nice color. And is one of those in colors I mentioned last week that is about to go away. And I will be very sad because Misty Moonlight is an awesome color. Um, and I think my son will appreciate the Misty Moonlight more than he would appreciate the petal pink. He loves red though, that I know. Um, there we go, so we're just lacing this through. So yeah, this ribbon is cotton ribbon. So it's not super slippery, super pliable. It ties the nicest bows. And, and if, you've ever, if you've ever chosen a ribbon that doesn't tie a nice bow that's constantly sliding or coming undone, or then you would understand why I'm so excited about this ribbon. It is just luscious. Okay, so I'm tying my little bow on top just to keep it closed. And because I know my son will like tear into this the second he gets it, I'm not going to put the tag on here. I'm going to put the tag on the front piece. There we go. I fussed with my bow. Okay, so now that I've actually tied it and I'm not pinching it with my fingers, it is a little bit looser. So yeah, that's probably a good idea. So again, we want an eight inch piece, eight and a half, give or take. Um, well, because this isn't square, I'm, I think I'm going to be doing a little uh, a little band-aid solution on this, but that's okay. So I'm going to take a piece of DSP this time, our little designer series paper. I'll pick the different pattern, because this one, I'm gonna, by the time I'm done, I'm going to have cut most of it off. Well, I'm going to try about a three-quarter. Trial and error, that's where we're at here. 
I want to get these hearts though. So I'm going to go up this side, three quarters of an inch. And we are going to see how we can make this work <laughs> with the angles. Except it is much easier on the square to just put it around. This will work. And in this case, because I have no idea where I'm actually going to hold anything, I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, score anything. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go roughly with my hands and see how it works out. Yeah, the problem is that we're going to end up with with gaps, which I don't want. So this is the problem with with the triangle. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with plan B instead. And I'm going to make a really cute tag to put on it. But I'm going to use my second favorite adhesive of all time. And I'm going to use blue dots. And I am going to, because it's tin foil, I was going to show you most of the time with blue dots, you can just, like if you're using this with a piece of paper, like something cut out, you could just go like this and you'll pick it up at the same time. Uh, with tin foil, because tin foil is a little more delicate, I'm going to use my little tool to pick it up. But I'm just going to go and take these two little dots and put them on the bottom of my big old kiss. And I'm going to slide it in. Nope, that's not going to work. I'm going to untie it and do it because if not, I'm going to have it stuck to the side. Okay. How nice I tied that bone just so I could untie it. So this will be enough to keep it from sliding out before I want it to. There we go. And then I'll just tie this back up. So I will tell you that one day when I was getting annoyed because my bows kept twisting the wrong way, because I'm particular about how they look, um, I saw a, a lady, a British lady, and I have no idea what her name was uh, now, because at the time I was just so, I was so excited to go try what she had just told me. And it worked so well, and then I totally forgot what her name was. But this lovely British lady said, here's the secret to tying bows. When you tie your first, <clears throat> like, half a granny knot, my camera doesn't necessarily focus very well when I get this close, but you'll have one string that's coming out on the, on the top of the knot, and you'll have one that's kind of coming out of the bottom of the knot. So in this case, this is the bottom. So if you use the bottom one to make a loop, and then instead of going around the front, come from behind and wrap around, and you will get a nice bow that is facing the direction you want. And better yet, has a nice flat front on it instead of showing like the you know the behind the scenes back part. And then you just do a little bit of futzing, which is yes, a very technical term to futz. I don't even know where it's from. I just know that it's a term I've heard my entire life. And then you have the pretty bow facing the right direction with the nice center. So, but see now, now my, my kiss won't come up because of those two little blue dots. So now I'm gonna turn it this way instead. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a reveal when he turns it. And I'm just gonna put my tag on the front. Use the tag there. I was gonna show you oops, that these uh, punches are awesome. I'm hoping they're not too big. Now that I see how small I made this little, this dude, I should have maybe, I maybe should have done a little trial and error first. And I should have made, um, made the box big enough to fit the heart, but I'm, I'm really hoping it's gonna work. Oh, it is gonna work too. Look at that. It, so again, Misty Moonlight, it kind of looks a bit like denim and oh my goodness, I just love it. Um, these punches though, you can still get, and these are from last year. And th this is like, so two punches, right? So one has the uh, scallop. I don't know why that word baffles me so many times. One has the scalloped edge and one has the straight edge. And then they layer over top of each other. And I just love this look. So that's why I chose it. But it also works, even scalloped. I still think it's, it's masculine enough. And then, I'm going to, oops, and only because it's funny for my son, <laughs> uh, I'm going to use the stamp that says, text me, because we have an ongoing battle 
with him not texting me and not answering texts, um, which was the whole deal for I'll pay for your phone as long as you answer me when I text you. Uh, so yes, so we, that will be amusing. Uh, Valentine's doesn't always have to be, you know, what you what you necessarily expect. It's whatever's personal to the person who's getting it. So there we go, text thing. And this is one of the cute conversation hearts that was in this, but um, hug me, text me, it just bounced that stuff me. You are cute, love you, BFF. Um, I really like this, happy to have you in my life. Um, that's gonna make great cards to give to just friends and people that you have, family that you're just happy are there. Uh, anyways, yes, I love conversation hearts, but more, more so I love, look at the, the eyes that come with this thing. So many things. So I'm going to move that out of the way before I stick my white piece of paper in my red ink. <clears throat> I'm just going to use a little bit of seal here. Yep, called it the right name for a minute there. I thought I called it the wrong name. Just going to put a little bit of seal here. Now we have a few different stamps, not stamps, sorry, punches that have a hole in them. Like if you just want a single hole at the risk of knocking my camera off the stand again. Um, I have an old school hole punch. <laughs> that's a really big one. That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> actually going to get up and go get the proper one. Look at that. There's your lesson for today. Um, if you have the old school, that will work. If you have the right one, that one's huge. Um, this is the little punch that we have that punches three different kind of corner things. And I should be able to make it work on here. You can see your paper even through here. You can see your paper. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this differently. I'm not going to punch a hole in that because I realize I already tied my ribbon on. If you do need a hole, though, this is this is the punch that has the best one because this hole is a nice oval and it's big enough that most ribbon will fit through it. But I just realized I already tied that bow and I'm putting this on the front and I want it, I want it to stay on the front because I didn't otherwise decorate the front. So I'm going to just put other dimensionals instead. So we're just going to add this onto the front. And there we go. And because, like I said, it's for a soon to be 14 year old boy, um, I'm not going to bling it up with a bunch of jewels or anything. Uh, it'll be funny enough that it says text me because he'll get the joke there. And then it's chocolate. He'll be happy. So from a very small, customized little uh, kiss container to a slightly bigger. And, and like I said, made the same way. It's two by two strips. These strips were longer. I didn't trim them back as much. Um, I made the same tag topper tops. I put a little safety band around it. And this is where instead of this, or in addition to, because look at how that works, um, you could put this strip around it and then put DSP, or you could have just put, if I hadn't cut this in half, you could have just put like a wider piece of DSP around here. I, I know, and you know, the best part, Mary, they're, they're super easy to make. They don't take a ton of supplies and they're very customizable. It's for those things that are the odd size that you can't just fit in the normal little box or something. Customizable. So those are those cute things. Go like that so you can see them. Okay, uh, what if I do it? Oh my goodness, look at me going 45 minutes later. I have one more thing I was gonna show you um, because I have used it, I bought it. <clears throat> I think they first became available maybe just before Christmas. Oh, yep, I can't remember now. Anyways, it's out of my desk for quite a while, and then I never used it at all. And then this week I've used it three times now because I have a bad habit of taking my paper and when I'm done a project, setting it off to the side, and the scraps that need to be filed tend to build up and build up and build up in a scrap pile. And sometimes, most of the times I can look at a piece of paper and go, oh, I know what that is. <clears throat> but there is a couple shades. There's two shades of pink and two shades of purple for, or of blue for sure that um, sometimes I look at and I'm like, is that? So Step Up now has this little cardstock sampler and it shows all the different colors of cardstock. So instead of looking at it and guessing and trying to get to the right light, you basically, and I'll tell you this, pink is one of them, petal pink is one of them. You basically just hold your cardstock up against this and see what it says. Here's the best part though. And yes, call me a nerd, I get it. I was so excited when I saw this. Did you see the colors? Um, 
I did a thing about colors a couple of weeks ago. So we have our, our color families. And a lot of people, when they sort stuff, like if you were to look at my inks or my paper, they're actually kind of sorted more rainbow. So all the yellows are together, then oranges, then reds, then pinks, then purples. But these are just, if you look at it from the side, you're like, hmm, I wonder what they used. Alphabetical order. I love that this is an alphabetical order. So Balmy Blue is another one. Balmy Blue and Pool Party. So here, so here's the, here's the beauty of, I think, of alphabetical order. So this is Balmy Blue. And then I'm going to go in here to the P's. And I'm going to find Pool Party. Because I know my alphabet. And it's after the E, not before it. There we go, Pool Party. Now, and when you see them like this, they maybe they don't look that much like. <laughs> but, but when you're looking at two pieces of paper and you don't have the reference, like you don't have two of them side by side, but see, now you can tell which one's pool party and which one's bottom blue. And it's so quick to, to find, right? So this petal pink's another one, petal pink and blushing bride. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, mm. uh, petal papaya, oh, that's such a big color. So because they're alphabetical, boom, petal pink. And then I can hold the thing up and go, yep, petal pink. <laughs> so this little dude, I was so excited about it. So I just thought I'd let you know that Snap Up sells these down. So if you ever wanted one, let me know. But when I used it for the third time after I grabbed it and I grabbed it today, I was like, oh, I've got to remember to tell people about this because, you know, and it wouldn't be hard to make, <clears throat> but are you seriously going to sit down and cut all the squares and label them all? No. Would you like to know another added bonus that I find with this that is like, totally unrelated and I'm, it's getting late and I really should just like stop now, but um, would you like to learn some other languages? <laughs> Does it have all the colors or just the newest ones? I'm going to say all of them because polished pink is one of the newest in, in colors. And it's right there because I just happened to flip to it. So yeah, I think they're all of them. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punish your ears by trying to pronounce what well French and then what I think is maybe German <laughs> as the three different languages. But seriously, give it a shot. Try to try to pronounce the other things and start recognizing. Um, yeah, because this says brawn. I would think this is German. Um, try learning colors in other languages. It'll be fun. So anyways, yes, it's the cardstock sampler. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so we had a sampler and we had some treat holders and we had a little box and look at this, just for, ooh, ooh, I don't know why my camera just went black all of a sudden and a little alternate fun fold for this little card. Um, so there you go. Bit of this, bit of that. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining me. Thank you very much, Mary, for commenting. I appreciate it. And uh, everybody have an awesome, awesome weekend. And I will uh, see you live again on Tuesday. There'll be other stuff in between, but I'll see you live again on Tuesday. Thanks everyone. Have a good night.